Hello, my friends. Welcome back to more of the Minehawk Gauntlet Challenge. I accidentally reloaded from not having bought things, so I'm going to go buy things for a sec, and then we will head on over to Outbreak, I'm thinking. Outbreak seems pretty good. We're going to get you 238 shells. But concussive doesn't seem super good right now. Marauder upgrade's not that good. I believe the last time at the end I got the mercenaries in addition to that. I think I'm just going to do that again. I think it was a good idea. Let's get this boy and that boy. Perfect. And now we have, what, like 40, 30k. All right, not enough to buy anything. I don't think I might be able to buy a bunker upgrade. No. All right, so I do have to be a little upfront here. Uh, so... Before I did Devil's Playground, my initial plan was to go to get Vikings real early because I thought they'd be really flexible. So I started Outbreak, and then I realized that I had the wrong recording settings on, so I had to restart the recording. And during that about little bit of time that I was in Outbreak, I kind of realized that I couldn't beat the mission with what I had at the time. So that's why I went to Devil's Playground instead. So I do know what's coming. I do think... I'm ready for it, maybe, but it's still going to be a little bit ridiculous. The, uh, I know this one is really hard, basically. <laughs> but I want to get it out of the way. Alright, Infested brought sunscreen and drugs. So, the way that this works is that they have double movement, double attack speed, and they do not die in the sun. However, they do not spawn during the sun. That's the big thing. Is that okay, what we're going to do... I found that the initial wave is obscene. It. It's just disgusting. So the way that I want to do it is build double engineering bays. And then I'm, I'll show you my setup that I came up with in a bit. How long does it take these to build? 35 seconds, okay. So we're going to do what damage we can against these buildings. We're going to get the gas. Maybe we shouldn't have gotten those tech labs that early, but I want Reapers. Let's just take down that and then maybe head back home. Because this is going to get scary real fast. Fire bat, fire bat, medic, medic, marine, marine, marine. We're going to keep that same little force over here. We're going to drop a one of these and a one of these. Get this guy on hold position and whoa, Marines, you don't want to be this far forward. Fire button here. This is what I figured out for the first night is that if you build buildings, the double attack speed infested deals so much damage you can't actually defend. So instead, the best way to do it is leave a one slot gap and use the medics to heal. The first night shouldn't be too horrible. I'm going to just try to get my Reaper infrastructure online at this point. And then hopefully I can get lots and lots of Reapers. Otherwise, I will in fact die. So as you can see, these infested fire at 0.6 for 8 damage. And they, they book it. Real, real fast, guys. Which is not something I'm super excited about. But I think we're going to be able to hold this night with just this setup, and that's good. I got a lot of gas, we got to get plus one. Just buy as much time as possible. They're not really putting pressure on these buildings, which is ideal. And I'm not entirely sure if I want to grab the upgrade or not. Oh, uh, what, what upgrade is it? Uh, armor. I'm not sure how good armor is going to be. Might be that I just want to focus on hyper, hyper aggression. So from my limited accidental testing, what I found is that the, or the sunscreen does two things. A, it really limits the amount of time that you have to fight because units that spawned right before the sunrise still attack you. It takes like 30 seconds to clean them all up. And then a bunch of units are just like spawned around the clear areas, which means that you can't send little squads around. You have to do it as a giant clump. Otherwise, you will get your goose cooked. And that means that the clearing speed is drastically reduced. 
Here comes the Hellions. So rude, he doesn't give you a depot. Hey, hotshot. I got schematics to build them Hellions. Oh, we can't build a tech lab with it. That sucks. <laughs> I wanted the tech lab. So we're going to have to send our guys as giant groups of friends around the map, which is not necessarily ideal. What I want to do is clear out various areas, like entire area. I want to clear out the top first, basically. <laughs> I'm sorry, there was spliced audio there and that was pretty good. <laughs> Rewind if you didn't catch that one. <laughs> uh. Alright, so we gotta just chill here for a bit longer. Rise and shine, boys. Now it's our time to do some damage. Now we can probably start moving this way. Yeah, this looks like the time. So that was a good extra ten seconds that we just didn't get to do anything. We're going to repair up here, we're gonna repair over here. And the Reapers should make short work of the buildings. What happened last time is I had non-stim like marines as my clearing, and it was just, it was garbage. So I knew I needed the anti-light Reaper and anti-building Reaper. Reaper's really just made for this mission, which is why they give you the Hellion. I always think of this mission as probably the most prime example of just not giving the right unit or giving a really bad unit. Partially because of all the overlap, like, getting the firebout on the evacuation is okay, I guess, right? Because it's your first anti-light unit, it's a barracks unit, all that kind of stuff. It makes sense, but then the mission after this in the chain, you get another fire-based anti-light unit, it's weird. Because you, by definition, have to already have that if you want to win. Or if you want to come here. So why would they give you another? It's very silly. I'm going to start building engineering bays over here. And keep clearing. I'm pretty happy with this clear speed overall. I'm going to leave the gap over there. Yeah, these Reapers are just absolutely slaughtering. I'm going to send the Reapers forward to take out another group. Yeah, this is the one I'm talking about. These groups right here the infested marines are going to start spawning and they are horrifying like more than you will ever believe until you see them all right let's get out of here we don't want to attack anything during the night because if you attack the buildings it spawns a lot of guys you should set some guards they'll be coming again soon and i don't know if they're going to open up the back or not so this is the Infested Marine. It fires two and a half times per second for six damage. And it gets more and more attack upgrades over time. So I think what's going to happen here is I'm going to have to pull back. I'm not entirely sure that I can fight at these defensive bastions much longer. Because the Infested Marine can slaughter the firebats that initially did the tanking. We're just going to have to very actively be taking down these front infested, which is why I got that plus three versus light damage. So my Reapers are currently dealing 26 versus light, which is huge. Well, 13 times two, which means that the armor does apply twice, but up to 26 versus light. Yeah, come right in. I think I need another barracks and another barracks. I'm trying to build these in ways that they kind of funnel the enemies towards my army. Oh, you know what would be good? All these guys. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, those infested Terran just like, didn't, that was weird. Didn't seem interested in attacking. We're gonna cancel these and we're going to get these guys instead. They seem better. Get some more medics, I think? because we're actually doing pretty well right now in terms of army durability. And next thing we have to think about is, are they going to open up the back here? 
if they do, I don't know when they do it, but I assume it'll be with like one minute remaining because that's that just seems normal, you know. Like, if I were a Blizzard balance designer in 2008 when I was making this mission, I would probably have it be with one minute remaining. I need these hammers, but I am supply capped. Open up the wall so it's harder for them to get in. Well, I'm not seeing anything back here. Maybe the engineering bays were scary enough that they just gave up. <laughs> they heard from their friends about pacifist and they're just like, oh no, engineering bays. How will we ever deal with this? Whoa! Well, we got the fire bats to help out here. But my goodness. Yeah, we lost a good bit of stuff there. Don't kill these guys. I don't think I need them. Alright, where do I want to go? We're going to have to defend for quite a while still. Let's see if we can split up this way. And then these guys can come this way, attack over here and down. And we're going to try using two major combat forces right here to clean things up. Oh, look, these guys are stuck. They didn't attack us. That's great. That is wonderful. Helps out a ton. We get a couple more depots. So the back is definitely going to get opened up soon. How do I want to deal with that? I'm not entirely sure. Let's see how much we can get. If I can get down to about 60 buildings, I think I'm going to be feeling pretty good. But if it's too many buildings, then I'm definitely going to be in some rough shape. I love the Reapers on this mission because the spines are often a big source of damage and being able to take out them quick is important. I want to get as much done before the Aberration spawn. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> so, in my practice attempt... The aberrations are what killed me. It turns out that two times speed aberrations, they eventually get up to plus three armor. And they were just immortal. And that's why I realized I needed something besides the Marine, because with plus three armor, they have five armor. And the Marine was dealing a damage against it. As it was stimming around, slapping them all to death. It was not good. I wish I had the footage to show it. We'll probably see it later in this mission, though. I do think we're going to hit my arbitrary goal of 60 structures. Which is great. I love arbitrary milestones. Uh, we got to start sending these back. Okay, everybody coming on home. So we have about half of the map, a little more than half of the map in terms of volume secure. Gonna be more of them out there. To me, that says that they're probably not going to come much from the top, right? Oh yeah, we can't really... Get, we have to cut, uh, recall early, which is interesting, because we can't outrun the infested. They will run us down if we get trapped on the field. I think this is going to be very doable, though. At this point, I feel like I'm in a position where it is effectively untouchable. Partially just because of the overpoweredness of the Reaper here. Wow, one guy came from the top and he actually taught me a lesson. Wonder how this died. I guess there are infested that are just queued to path up there. It's a shame to lose it though. The sensor tower is very nice to have here. The infested Terran seem to be acting just funky. Like, have you noticed that they just keep walking in and not shooting sometimes? Like, these ones are shooting, but some of the ones on the other side were absolutely not doing their job. Which I can't complain about, but it's definitely weird. 
because I would be losing a lot more units if all of them were firing consistently. These devil dogs have been doing great. This double, 62 kill fire bat. Base is under attack. He's just, they tank great on this mission. This is the mission for the fire bat really in that respect because the infested are so good against them. It's a problem that the reaper is better and that the hellion is introduced. It's really just a problem with the design. And don't even get me started on the vulture who is just better than all of them put together. I should probably try to get the vulture real quick. What unit should I be rushing for? What do you guys think? So obviously, the higher I get up, the more difficult the challenges are. So it's not like I can really, really easily rush to battlecruisers or something. But I do think the Viking will be good as just a flexible unit in the future because we don't know what the challenges are going to bring. So having something that can hit air from a long range, can hit ground if need be, I think that's pretty nice. Having a flyer would be good. And then, obviously, the Spectre or the Ghost would be good. Which one of those do you guys think would be better? I think there's merit in both of them. My mind tells me I might want the Spectre, you know? I think the Spectre is a little bit more... Uh, probably the Ghost is a little more flexible, actually, because of its incredible, incredible range. Eight range versus the five of the Spectre is a huge difference. I believe the Ghost also just does more DPS against everything which is important to pay attention to. All right, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop them down to one building during all of this. One building. And then I'm going to wait for the night and I'll kill the... Yeah, actually, I could just do the missile turret thing to kill the bonuses. I don't have to wait. So we're going to swing here. By the way, sorry if it seems like I'm rushing things. Uh, it still hurts to sit and I want to go lay down. So I'm just, I'm like playing really try hard and just trying to win instead of goofing around and having fun. I'm not having a bad time. I'm not not having fun, but you know what I mean. Like, this is a lot closer to when Grant is trying to win instead of experiment and figure out what things are like. So what do we I'm got? More 28 more structures. Great. Uh oh. Yeah, these aberrations are terrifying. We'll probably get to see more of them in Haven's Hall or Safe Haven, depending on which one we do. We'll do both of them, obviously, via the archives to make sure that we get all the challenges. However, we will have to pick one for the Spectre of the thing. Maybe I'll let you guys pick. So... I think in this mission, I'm going to ask, should we go Haven's Fall or Safe Haven once we get the opportunity? And the highest upvoted comment on the YouTube thing after, let's say, 24 hours. The highest upvoted comment there will be the one that I do. And uh, make sure that you give a reason. Why should we go to your favorite mission instead? I, it doesn't really matter for this one, but we're just kind of setting up for the future, you know? What's going on? Uh... Oh, I don't have an engineering bag. All right. <laughs> I guess I'm not proxying turrets. Make sure these guys don't fire on this final building. I thought I queued up turrets here. Did I... Did I have a flaming engineering bay? Is that what happened? That's pretty funny if true. They'll be coming again soon. My engineering bay was on fire. I queued up the turrets. They went over there. The engineering bay was dead by the time they got there, so it didn't work. That's incredible. Oh, jeez. There we go. GG. Let's get some more upgrades so that I can accidentally revert the wrong save again. You did it, Jim. Thanks, Doc. Hmm. Obviously, I don't want the Hellion upgrades because they're absolutely garbage. So that means we have some stuff to... Ooh. Planetary. Nice. Hmm. I'm going to let you guys vote on this one, too. Planetary or Perdition. Uh, whichever option I see with more upvotes in the YouTube comments will be the one that I go for. 
and then same with Safe Haven and Haven's Fall. Because I think that's the first choice that we're going to get. So that'll be fun. Because I don't really care between these two. I think that I'm going to have to go for the Hercules when it comes to... You know, stuff is going to be kind of hard in the future. And I think that having a very reliable dropship that doesn't lose everything will be very helpful. I'm going to have to go sell your reactor. I'll let you guys vote on this one when the time comes. Then ultra capacitors. Probably micro filtering. Auto gas. I'll let you guys pick between these. And then I'll let you guys pick between these as well. So we'll have a lot of various options. And then I'm going to head to the armory and see exactly what else I can get. I'm going to get bunker upgrades because the next couple missions that we're looking at are... Let me talk to the bridge. Yeah, Belshir is definitely a good bunker mission because they have the Colossus, they have the High Templar. Those sorts of things are not great against bunkers. And they're very, very great against everything else. So I think that's a good idea. We're going to sit on that. I'm just going to save and this be the say it's the Dave. <laughs> uh, this is the Dave. Thank you guys for coming. This was a fun one. I hope you had a good time. I am going to go lay down. I will see you tomorrow. Have a good day. Peace. Oh, it's Kaczynski.